I would say by the time I was 14 years old, I knew what I wanted to do. And when you're 14 years old and you know what you want to do for your life's work, you've got a big advantage on everybody else because you're already preparing yourself, finding those places, special places to work and finding those people who will let you work with them at, at a young age and not dismiss you as some kid. And I was very lucky that I had several mentors along the way who took me under their wing and uh, taught me metalwork. At that time in my life, I was very interested in car magazines, and I became of a, aware of a craftsman from California named Luigi Lozowski, and I kind of uh, made him my hero. And uh, later on, years, I actually got to be uh, his assistant at a job that I had in uh, North Carolina at Home and Moody. Uh, they made me Luigi's assistant, and you can imagine how much I learned from him. It was uh, really amazing being his helper, and the thing that worked for us as a uh, mentor, helper type situation was that he knew I was interested. Uh, he knew I was very interested in learning and learning more, and so he was willing to teach and teach me plenty. The sheet metal part of my education started extremely early because it was the one thing that I was the most interested in. I thought it was real uh, artistic kind of metal, uh, or kind of work to do on metal. And it took a lot of creativity, it took a lot of skill, it took a lot of hard work. It wasn't something easy to do. And I always made it my point to learn about shaping metal. In 1980, Tom Monroe from HP Books, who was the automotive editor at HP Books, his job was also to find new authors and ask if I would write a book on metal fabrication. And uh, my wife and I thought it over and thought this would be a, a good project to do together. And uh, I knew what to say on the subject, but she knew how to say it because she had a lot of write writing skills. So we went on ahead and we wrote this book and they called it Metal Fabricator's Handbook. It turned out to be a great success and it didn't take them long to ask us to write another one and I could choose the subject. And this time I chose to write a book called Sheet Metal Handbook. It's all the chapters are just on sheet metal and how to do sheet metal work because that's really my true love is sheet metal work. One of the best things my dad ever did in the line of teaching people is writing his first and second book. That book has brought him more recognition and more friends and, and just people have really magnetized to him because of that book and there was such a high demand for the information on sheet metal shaping that he went on to do the second book just in shaping sheet metal. The main reason I got involved in teaching was I figured it was payback time. I've had so many people throughout the years teach me and were free with their information, free with their techniques. And uh, I think it was always in the back of my mind that it would be something great to do. But I waited a long time before I decided to do it. I really wanted to, I felt like I, I need to be better at what I do before I can teach other people. And uh, I, I was probably doing metal work at least 25 years before I decided, now's the time. Why don't you go, just go ahead and, and teach? Something I really believe in, the idea is to keep this knowledge of metal work going. Keep it going. It's don't let it die out. Let it pass on from person to person. It's very satisfying and uh, something that I always will be glad that I started. When I was first learning how to use a wheel, he spent a lot of time explaining to me how important tracking was. And, you know, not, you just can't, you know, jump on there and, and roll metal around and, and think you're going to get where you want to be. You know, you have to understand how the machine's working and what it's doing, and you know, you have to learn how to track properly. And if you don't take the time to learn how to track properly, you're never going to get where you want to be. You're not going to be able to control the metal. The metal's going to control you, and the machine's going to control you. So you're just gonna end up with these odd shapes all the time, you know? <laughs> so, uh, he spent a lot of time teaching me and really 
you know, taking his time and and uh, and showing me piece by piece how I needed to, you know, build up my uh, my talents and my repertoire of skills. One of the things that Ron and I are very grateful for is to be a part of this community of metal workers, professionals, amateurs, and hobbyists. And uh, on a daily basis, we're truly excited to see how this community is expanding and growing and all the excitement that it contains. This kind of work can bring a real feeling of satisfaction in that being that you're creating something from scratch and you follow it through the whole process right to going to the racetrack or the drag strip or any uh, the show, the car show, to see your products perform. It's a tremendous reward, very gratifying trade to be in. And uh, I can't think of another thing that I would recommend anybody do. Uh, I love to go to work in the morning. And that's uh, pretty amazing in this day and age that there's jobs out there that people love so much that they want to go to work. They don't want to stay home, they want to work. A gentleman came to me, his name was Bob Laird, and he'd been dreaming about building a special handmade car using Corvette C4 suspension with a Jaguar engine. The first thing to build was the buck itself. And this is quite a job. It took two men two months. We built the buck over the existing chassis. It allowed us to find any potential mistakes, like would the front wheels turn right and left without bumping the fenders, things like that. On completion of the buck, we started right in with the sheet metal work. We used the typical 3003H14063. The majority of the shaping was done with the English wheel. Some of it was first pounded out in a bag and then smooth. Made in segments, like fender halves. It was all gas welded together. The whole time we were doing this, we were also building the dashboard, floorboards, the fuel tank, the exhaust system and any and every component that you can think of when it left the shop. It had to start up and drive out the door. And it took us two years to do it. It was well worth it. Visually, I think the car turned out very nice. The styling aspect of it was a lot of fun. Now that the Laird car is done and gone, I think about it often. The customer was very happy with it. It was another great project. I'm really glad that it came along. Hi, I'm Ron Fournier. And I'm Ron Covell. Ron and I have been friends for years and we decided to do a video together on hammer forming. A lot of people don't even know what a hammer form is. I learned about hammer forming from Ron Fournier's books years ago and until I'd read the books I wasn't even aware that the process existed. This is a combination buck hammer form that Ron Fournier made for a Bugatti that he recently rebodied. This is a very interesting fixture because it combines aspects of what we'd call a station buck with aspects of what we'd call a hammer form. And it's really wonderful that they can be combined into one fixture. Now, I'm gonna start at this end and come back right into here. So I think you can see how helpful this combination hammer form buck is for both giving us the alignment of the parts, but also for forming the edges of the parts. And it enables us to make a very beautiful part with a minimum of tooling, and the finished results will be absolutely exquisite. So this is the end of our videotape on hammer forming. I think you all can see that it's a wonderful process, and it enables you to make really beautiful parts using very simple technology. 
And I must say, it's been a very special treat for me to make this video with my pal Ron Fournier, the man who first taught me about the hammer form process. I've enjoyed working with you, Ron, in this video, and I hope we do another one in the future. All right, thank you. I've been following the metal shaping movement for the past 15 or 20 years now and it's been fascinating to go from a very quiet, almost secret society to something that's on television almost 24 hours a day and when you think of the pioneers of bringing metal shaping and metalworking to the mainstream, Ron Fournier is clearly out in front with both his books and the newsletters and then later his courses. So I think he's really going to go down as one of the people that brought metal shaping to the masses.